Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you so much for your participation to today's session. This is gonna be our session one uh, for the A-Star P-Series configuration. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, for today's session, we're actually gonna use this live demo, which is our Yay Star P550, uh, you know, as an example. So I'm gonna show you guys more details about this P550 configurations. All right. So anyway, I guess it's about the time for us to get started. Let's jump in, okay? Now, uh, as you guys can see, this is my P550. And when I log into the system, you guys, I'm pretty sure you must have noticed that I changed the IP address of my P550. So basically, when you get a brand new P-Series, uh, just remember that the default IP address is 192.168.5.150. So you can basically use your computer, uh, your laptop, connect the Ethernet cable with your P550 or P560 uh, and even P570. Anyway, they all have the same uh, default IP address. So you will be able to access the system directly. Well. By the way, when you try to use your computer to connect with your, you know, P-Service PBX directly for the uh, direct access, don't forget to change the IP address of your computer. I mean, especially the network segment of your computer. Otherwise, you will not going to be able to jump into the system. All right. Uh, it's not a big deal, but just don't forget that. All right. Uh, and by the way, guys, uh, if you have a brand new P-Service, when you try to start your configuration, I guess there is a much easier way for you to start your job. Uh, well, you know, when you take your P-Series out of the box on the front side panel, uh, we got a logo area. So behind that logo, it's actually, uh, we got a NFC tag. So you can simply just take your mobile. I mean, if you have mobile with an NFC chip, uh, and by the way, don't forget to get our Linkus, okay, uh, which is the application. So get this Linkus, Yay Star Linkus application from the, you know, Google Play or App Store. Anyway, then you simply just open this app on your mobile. And uh, there is one option available for you, which is called NFC. So you simply just tap that and then use your mobile to scan the logo uh, on our PBX. Okay, the logo area on our P-Series P PBX. That's actually the NFC scanning. So you will be able to, uh, you know, configure the Ethernet configuration. Uh, I mean, the network configuration. All the settings will be available for you to set your brand new P-Series PBX directly, uh, which means much easier. You don't even have to, you know, connect the PBX directly with your computer. You can just deploy your system directly. I mean, change the IP address, network settings, something like that. All right. And by the way, uh, perhaps you may have another question is, uh, what if I change my IP address? All right, then how about the next time? If there's uh, somebody else, they, all, they, they can actually also use their mobile to scan the NFC tag. Uh, well, can they change the IP address? Well, don't worry about that. If you want to use the NFC function for network configuration, you can only use it for once. I mean, when you try to scan the NFC for the second time, uh, obviously, you can't do nothing about the not a modification. You can never modify the IP address or network settings anymore. Your NFC uh, on your mobile will work as read only. Uh, I mean, I mean the, the, the NFC mode will work as read only. That's it. All right. So anyway, that was a pretty good solution. That's a much easier way for you to do that. And uh, more importantly is if you use NFC function for this network configuration, uh, I guess you don't even need to power on your system. You can just simply change the IP address, network settings directly, and then power on your system. Your system is going to work completely under your configuration. Uh, that's very simple, much easier. Okay. Well, anyway, I guess we're going to jump into our system, and let's give it a check here. So NFC just, uh, I guess, you know, like I said, a much easier way for you to start your configuration. Now let's jump into our system. Uh, with the super administrator because we're going to deploy the system. So let's give it a check. Well, once again, uh, when you try to access the system, the default username is admin uh, for the super administrator, and the default password is yaystar202. Uh, give it a check here. This is going to be the default uh, password, yaystar202. And then we're going to jump into the system. All right, here we go. Now, the first thing we got here is going to be the dashboard of your P service system. It's quite clear once you jump into your system, this dashboard tells you everything. It's a real time feedback. Uh, for example, 
uh, we're going to be able to see that our system working performance, uh, you know, hardware status, everything, all right? So, for example, like uh, how many active costs you got there? How about your CPU? How about your uh, memory? All of the, those, you know, hardwares, uh, even the system, the firmware, the working performance will be displayed on this panel directly uh, by a real time, all right? And I guess this is a very functional. Uh, let's keep going. Something else we can give it a check here. You guys can see we will have registered extensions, SIP trucks availability, Linkus uh, clients registration. Anyway, so all of these important data will be displayed on this panel. Uh, once again, it's a real time feedback. And even for something else like your interface status, uh, so something like you got Ethernet cable, you connect it with the LAN port or WAN port. Or you got some other channels like uh, analog channel or ISDN channels. If you have, they will be displayed over here. Now, uh, obviously, currently, I, uh, I I don't have any you know ISDN channel or uh, you know analog channel uh, because the point is, if you want to display all those channels, you have to make sure you got a specific module inserted on your system. Uh, for example, if I, if I want to check the uh, I mean the connection of my uh, analog channel, I mean the LAN line, first thing is I have to make sure I got an O2 module inserted on my system. Uh, then I just plug it in, you know, I just plug the cable in the system, it will be displayed over here, uh, you know, show us the working status. Just like what I have here, uh, the same card. All right, it's quite clear. Okay. And uh, next step, I guess, once we jump into our system, I guess we can probably click on admin here. This is going to be the information of the Super Administrator, so let's have a quick look here. Now, you can simply click on Administrator Settings. Here it tells you something about the Administrator's, you know, information, all right? So, first line we have here is going to be the email address. This is going to be the mailbox. I mean, if you set a mailbox here, this is going to be the one for the super administrator. So, in the future, if there's something wrong happened on the system or we would like to get some notification, uh, you know, you will get the notification over, over there. And by the way, you can also drop your mobile number here. So, some kind of notifications if you would like to receive the notification by... Uh, you know, calling mobile, you can just put your number there. All right. Uh, of course, here we can also change the contact name for this very particular user, uh, which is the super administrator. And uh, next one, we get a notification method, uh, two options, email address and call mobile. Uh, so you can just pick one, whichever you prefer. The last one is going to be a notification level. Uh, this is quite interesting. Give it a check here. Uh, this time we got a three different options. Uh, by our default setting, we just enable all of them for the super administrator. So three options are quite different. We got something we call information, something we call warning, something we call alert. Uh, it depends on what kind of, what type of, you know, uh, events happened on our system. All right. Uh, anyway, I will show you guys more details later. Okay, let's keep going. So this is about the administrator setting. Uh, very important. Okay. And I'll uh, keep going. Next one, we got to change password over here. That's very important, guys. All right, so if you got a brand new system, uh, you're going to make use of your system for the whole telephony uh, system. I mean, you're going to use this PBX for your telephony system. Absolutely, you're going to change the password. It's good for security. So we just highly recommend you guys uh, get your PBX there and uh, change the password. And uh, next one, we got a, you know, data processing agreement. Well, you can give it a check there. I guess if you guys get a brand new system, you have this processing uh, agreement. And next one, language. Currently, we got a bunch of language options, like uh, English, like Chinese. Anyway, so you can switch different language types. Okay. So this is about the administrator information. And the uh, next thing we got here is the notification bell. Uh, this notification bell is quite functional, so whatever happened on your system, uh, it will be marked as, uh, you know, you will get a notification mark over here. So you can click on this bell. Uh, we simply just jump to our, you know, uh, the system. Uh, here, we got an event notification. Uh, so we simply just go access the event notification directly, and uh, this is going to be the place where, uh, where we'll display all the issues happen on your system. Okay, 
So give it a check here. We're going to have event locks. So whatever you've done on the system, it will be recorded here. All right. For example, like uh, this is a, this is the time, this is a date, and uh, this is what I've done on the system. All right. And I can mark all as read. All right. So forget about them. All right. And uh, let's keep going. Next one we have here is the event type. Let me just talk about this. You know, uh, have a check here. In the event type here, we got event level, which I mentioned at the very beginning. We got uh, three levels of the notifications, right? So we have information, we have warning and alert. Different items, I mean, different issues. We just mark them as different levels. Uh, for example, something very common, not a big deal, like web user logging success. That's not a big deal. So we just mark it as information. And uh, something a little bit important, like a SIP chunk registration failed. This is really important for you, all right? If you got something wrong happen on your SIP chunk, that's a big deal, honestly. So we mark it as warning. An emergency call dial out. Well, that's something so urgent. That's something emergency situation. Uh, we mark it as alert. Uh, so it's kind of like that, all right? We just got lots of items here, and uh, we just, you know, uh, make different levels for them. Okay, so this is about the event type. And uh, obviously, you can have some other operations here. Uh, you got notification, you can enable this. So if you enable notification, uh, the notification contact will get the notification. Of course, like super administrator. So if I enable this notification for administrator passwords changed, if someone messed with our you know, administrator's password, uh, well, for sure, I will get notified. And uh, next one, we got email template. For different issues, we got a different templates. Of course, uh, give it a check here. This template is, uh, you know, something you can have a check here. We got a default template, all right? Or you can choose custom. So something you can, you know, make some modification by yourself. But I guess we can, we can just keep the default template, which is, uh, you know, that's enough. That's quite functional. All right. So this is about the event type. Uh, by the way, here we got notification contacts. Let's just have a look. So by our system default setting, we got one notification co contact, which is our super administrator. And if you want to add somebody else, some other you know notification contacts, you can just put them over here. Uh, like currently, I got Becky. And uh, her notification methods is call mobile. And uh, the event levels to notify, I just select uh, warning. So if there's something uh, which which are you know marked as warning, uh, then we're gonna make a call to Becky. Okay, so this is about the event notification. All right, uh, let's keep going. Then uh, I mean next to the notification bell, we got this cloud icon. This is actually the way how you get the new update. So if you wanna uh, check the new update, you can click on this button. Well, I guess our system is uh, is up to date, so I'm not going to click on that. And the next one, this is uh, going to be kind of like a help center. So if you want to get more information about our P-series or uh, something more detailed about like a user manual or something, you can click on that, uh, go access our, you know, uh, docu document center or something. Uh, so there, there, there is actually the place where you can get more information. All right, now let's keep going. So I guess we can start our deployment right now, all right? So since I mentioned the network configuration, you can finish that part of work by your mobile with the NFC, but let's just have a check here again, all right? Now, if you would like to change the IP address by yourself, uh, of course, for sure, you can still use the traditional way for you to do that. Uh, the traditional way is we're not gonna use mobile, we're not gonna use NFC, we're going to jump into the system directly. So have a check here. All right. You can simply click on network here. And uh, here we got basic settings. Let's just stay focused on this. All right. That's exactly what we're going to do right now. So we got Ethernet mode. Uh, three options. Okay. By our system default setting, we got a single mode there. Uh, so you only have LAN port, which is available for your configuration. That's the default setting. All right. And uh, uh, by the default configuration, like I said, uh, we have single mode here, and the LAN port IP address is 192.168.5.150. All right, remember that, all right? And uh, here at Ethernet mode, you have uh, some other options. You can also select it as dual mode. You can select it as bridge mode. Uh, I'm going to talk about them one by one. 
So let's see we're going to use single mode first. Uh, you have three options for your LAN port configuration for now, currently. You can select DHCP, which basically means you're not going to configure a static IP address, a very particular IP address on your LAN port. Uh, instead, you're going to get your you know, dynamic IP address from the DHCP server. So you're going to select DHCP. Uh, this is about the DHCP uh, for your LAN port. And uh, if you select static IP address, which is very po popular, which is very common. So over here, you're going to set a very particular IP address for your LAN port. Uh, just like what I did, you guys can see I changed the IP address to 192.168.6.110. Uh, that's the IP address I get currently. All right. And uh, by the way, just don't forget to set something else like your gateway configuration, DNS server configuration. Make sure uh, you will get the internet access from your router. Okay. So for this part of your configuration, I guess the most important thing is uh, something on your router. All right. Make sure your router is working, you know, totally under your control, under your configuration, uh, well configured. And then you will get the internet access um, over here. And another option we got here is triple PoE, uh, which is not that popular, but it depends. Sometimes maybe, maybe in some area we don't have, uh, you know, a public static IP address or even a dynamic IP address from the service provider from the carrier. I mean, we don't even have an IP address from the carrier. They don't provide us any uh, IP address. The way how they provide us the internet is totally different, all right? So for that kind of circumstance, uh, we're actually going to use triple PoE because what we get from the service provider, from the carrier, is actually the username only, all right? We don't have IP address. So we don't, uh, in other words, we don't even need a router. We just need to connect it with the service provider directly, get the internet access. So over here, we're going to put our username and the password to... Uh, activate the network service on our PBX. Okay, so this is about the single mode. And, and the other option we got here is dual mode. Let's give it a check. Now, if you select dual mode here, uh, for sure, we're going to enable two ports simultaneously. We get a LAN port and one port. So for your LAN port configuration, you can keep it this way. I guess this is very common, not a big deal. Uh, you're going to just keep it this way. Quite popular, right? You get, you're going to get the internet access from your router directly and uh here we got a wan port now here's a question when and uh why are we going to use door mode all right so this might be a question well honestly if you have uh your internet service and your sip trunk service uh, which i'm going to talk about in the following you know uh configurations so maybe a little bit later i'm going to talk about our sip trunk configuration all right but anyway just uh give it a check here if you have your internet service and your SIP trunk service uh, with the same channel, which means you're going to use one same Ethernet cable from the service provider for both of your internet service and your SIP trunk service, well, you're going to use, I guess you can use the single mode directly because they're sharing the same channel for different services, right? But sometimes in some areas, perhaps your services, I mean, the type of your service will be a little bit different. Service provider, they might probably give you two different channels. I mean, in other words, they will give you two cables, two different Ethernet cables, one specifically for your Internet service and another one for your SIP trunk. So for that kind of circumstance, obviously, I have to make sure I got, a, I got available interfaces to connect different services, right, to connect different lines. So now we're going to use uh, dual mode. The LAN port, we can just use it for, you know, connecting with the internet service, you know, connect with your router, something like that. And for your WAN port, currently, you're going to just reserve it specifically for your SIP trunk service. And for this type of, you know, circumstance, mostly service provider, they will provide you a very particular public IP address. Uh, be careful. I mean, mostly. They will just provide you a very particular public IP address, and they will ask you to configure this particular IP address. I mean, they will just ask you to set this IP address on your device directly. So you will probably use static IP address. I mean, if you have, then they will just provide you one. You're going to drop it over here. All right. 
But uh, but uh, just like I said, this is uh, mostly they will they will do something like this. Well, if they provide you a dynamic IP address, the, it also makes sense. It depends on the service provider. So this is uh, the way uh, how we make use of the dual mode. And uh, more importantly, guys, give it a check here on my right hand. We got a, a default interface. All right. So if you select dual mode here, don't forget to select a uh, default interface. It could be one port, it could be a LAN port. Depends on you. All right. Uh, the difference is if you set a default interface here, that interface is going to work for uh, both incoming and outgoing data. All right. So I guess uh, mostly if you're going to use your own WAN port connected with the SIP trunk, I mean, just for SIP trunk, just for making calls, and you will like to use LAN port for your data, uh, for your data transmission, for your internet service, anyway, like that. So you can just select LAN port as the default interface. Now make sure the LAN port is connect with the internet with no problem. All right. So this is about the dual mode. And another option we got here is bridge mode. All right. <clears throat> so let's have a check. Now if we select bridge mode, that's pretty easy, guys. If we select bridge mode here, then it's kind of like we just build a bridge between LAN port and WAN port physically. All right. So originally, we're only going to use LAN port uh, for everything, for your data transmission. But physically, we just connect them together. So it's kind of like we're going to use LAN port handle upstream. We're going to use WAN port handle downstream. So they're all connected with each other. Uh, physically connection, kind of like that. This is also quite popular, I guess. Lots of customers, they will deploy their PBX in their local area network uh, by selecting bridge mode. On their PBX, so they will be able to do something like I said. They're going to use the LAN port connect with the upstream, and uh, WAN port go for downstream. All right. So this is about the basic settings. All right. Then if you make some changes here, if you got some modifications here, then you can just give it a check here. All right. Click on save. Don't forget it. Then we get this notification. Saved, su saved successfully. <coughs> Please reboot. So these changes can take effect. Do you want to reboot it now? All right. Don't forget to reboot your system. Otherwise, all of your configurations were not going to take effect. Uh, I mean, especially some configurations, some modifications you made on your, you know, system configuration. Something about the system configuration. So if you make some changes there, you will get this pop up. All right. Uh, I guess I'm not going to reboot it now. I'm going to just skip this part because it will probably take around one or two minutes uh, like that. So I think we're going to skip that, and let's keep going. So this is about the first step, network configuration. And uh, next step, date and time. Well, about the date and time, like I said, if you get internet access, everything will be simpler for you because you've already got the internet connection. I guess you can just sync your date and time with the NTP server automatically, right? So give it a check here. We have this option. It has been enabled automatically. Sync with NTP server. The only thing left for you is just to select your time zone. All right. And uh, enable or disable the daylight saving time, kind of like this. Depends on you. All right. And about NTP server, I guess you can just keep it this way. All right. If you got your, I mean, your own NTP server, you can put it over here. But I guess we can just use the default one. It's not a big deal. All right. And the next thing we got here is display format. Uh, that's very interesting. You will have some customization here. I mean, it's kind of like you can have some personalization on your system. All right, so like uh, my personal preference, I would like to use month, date, and year. And the time display format, I will prefer 24-hour format, so I can just customize it like this. All right, and again, if you make some changes here, you click on save, uh, you will get that pop-up to uh, notify you, reboot the system. All right, because I never change anything here. Well, I don't have any pop-up here. Okay, well, let's keep going. Next step, email settings. All right, so previously I was talking about uh, notifications. Do you remember? So if there's something wrong happening on your system in the future, you're going to be able, I guess you're going to be able to get the notification by email. That's one of the options, right? So... You have to make sure you got available mail server. Otherwise, you can't, right? So give it a check here. If you have the internet configuration, uh, you just finished that part. 
this is not going to be a big deal because uh, about the email server, we have a default email server, which is Yaystar SMTP server. So you can just click on test. Put your test mail address over here. Click on test. So you will get a test mail that basically means everything's well configured. All right. So this is the easier way for you to do that. But I guess some of you guys may probably want to change this default uh, SMTP server. You want to have some customization? Well, go for it. You can customize your mail server by yourself uh, for sure. Uh, it will be a little bit tricky for you to do that if you select it as the custom mail server. So something you're going to do it by yourself, like the mail address or username and password, uh, something like that. Okay, and uh, by the way, you can also disable this, of course. Uh, let's just take the default one, all right? And here's the email templates. And again, uh, you know, lots of notifications. We can make customization for the email templates over here. All right, like a mail server, test mail, reset password, voicemail to email. Anyway, all these odd uh, items, we got a very particular email templates. Okay, so these templates are totally customizable as well. If you want to customize it, select custom here. Then you can make some changes. All right. Uh, the next one, email sent logs. So if you sent some notifications or you know some some emails before, uh, we're gonna have a check here. It will be recorded here. For example, I got lots of mails sent out. Uh, they're all gonna be displayed over here. Okay. So this is about the email uh, settings. Okay, I guess we're good, and uh, let's keep going. All right, now next step, I guess we can start our configuration directly. So we're going to talk about extension configuration. All right. Now, before we get started, I guess there's one thing left, which is PBX settings, because we're going to get ourselves be ready. So some preparation work is very important. So let's have a check on PBX settings first. Uh, we will simply click on preferences directly. All right. Here's something for your basic preferences, all right? So something you want to make a customization, for example, like FXO mode or whatever, max call duration, uh, device name, you want to make some customization, you can just change it here. And by the way, I guess another thing you guys probably want to know, uh, it's about the extension preferences. Like, uh, what about the number range? Because we're going to start to create uh, a bunch of extensions there. So how about the extension number range? I would like to have an extension number with three digits or four digits, something like that. So I'll give it a check here. This is the extension preferences, and uh, you can just change it over here. Uh, it's quite simple, but one thing, just be careful. If you change something like, uh, I want to make the first number be three digit, all right, then here you got a notification. The start number and the end number must have the same amount of digits. So if I change the first number like one hinger, then I have to change the last number. Three digits. All right, that's the format requirement. Okay, uh, let's just keep the default one. All right, so this is something I'm going to, uh, you know, give it a check here. Be careful. And the next step, voice prompt. Have a check here. The voice prompt we have here is uh, just something. First thing you have here is the prompt preferences. All right, so you can make some changes, some customization for your preferences settings over here. All right, like uh, <clears throat> music on hold, invalid phone number prompt. Uh, if you want to make a selection, you can select it here. And here we got a system prompt. Uh, and by the way, another prompt we have here is the custom prompt. Uh, just be careful, they're totally different. All right. System prompt is something, something you know, provided by the system, all right? like English. Or for example, we got English here. And, uh, or you can download some other prompts, uh, different languages. All right. So it's kind of like some notification played by the system. Uh, like uh, if you want to have some operations on your phone system, and uh, you will probably get a notification from the system. Well, that will be the system prompt. And uh, another prompt we have here is the custom prompt. Uh, it's totally different. Custom prompt, mostly this is recorded by yourself. And uh, for some circumstances, we're going to play the custom prompt. For example, like the IVR, all right? When a customer make a call, uh, when a customer makes a call, comes into your phone system to reach the IVR, definitely you're going to play the custom prompt because this is your company, not some somebody else's company. So we don't have a standard. 
This must must be customized by yourself. All right. So for example, if you guys call Yay Star, you will hear something like, uh, "Thank you for calling Yay Star." Well, that's recorded by Yay Star. All right. So this is the custom prompt. Uh, the way how we make prompts. Uh, let's have a check. On your system prompt here, you can click on upload system prompts directly if you have something on your you know computer on your local anyway, or you can just click download online prompts directly. All right, make sure you got internet access so you can get different prompts uh, over here directly. And for your custom prompt, uh, you can click on record new. So you will select one of your extension. Uh, apparently, we don't have any extension for now. This is just something I created before. But anyway, if you got some existed extension over there, you can just make a selection and、uh, give it a name here. Then you can click on record, so you will have a new record there. Or you can click on upload again.、Uh, so if you have some local prompt you want to upload it on your PBX, you can do it here. Okay, so this is about the custom prompt and a system prompt. And I guess now we can probably get started.、Uh, let's give it a check on extension settings. So go click on extension, and over here,、uh, I got a bunch of extensions existed already, guys.、Uh, those things, those extensions are all for testing something. So forget about that.、Uh, let's just get started with this new extension. All right. So we can simply click on add. All right. And then、uh, this is the way how we add a new extension, actually. And、uh, as you guys can see there, we can also click back add. So we can also add multiple extensions by one time. All right, it's gonna be something similar. All right,、uh, but let's just have a check on this、uh, this one first. All right. So first thing we got here is the basic settings、uh, extension type. We have SIP extension and FXS extension. Two options available for you. So if you select SIP extension. This is、uh, quite popular. Mostly, this is just for our IP phones, our、uh, Yay Star Lancus.、Uh, you know, for all the SIP terminals, we're gonna use SIP extension, and、uh, we can also select FXS extension. So over here, you're gonna make a selection. But if you select FXS extension, make sure you got a FXS module inserted on your system. Then you will have available. You know, this drop-down list it works. Otherwise. You're gonna have something like what I have right now. There's nothing because you don't even have available interface for your FXS、uh, extension, which is your analog file. All right, I'm gonna use SIP extension as an example. So let's give it a check. So next part, user information.、Uh, we got a first name and last name. This is gonna be customizable. So go ahead. For example, I want to put my name over here. So this is gonna be Jason New. All right. And I got my email address and my mobile number.、Uh, and once again, so something in the future, like、uh, if I make myself as the notification contact, or I want to receive some information like a voicemail to email,、uh, obviously I'm gonna need my mailbox and my mobile number. So I can just put my mailbox here with my mobile number.、Uh, just any number. All right, I just type any number here, just as an example. Now here we got a user password. Uh, this is a random password. We don't even know what is that. But just give it a check here. The password for extension user to log into the system. That's actually the way how we make use of the password. All right.、Uh, you guys know that currently I'm logged into the system with the Super Administrator account, and、uh, of course I can also log into the system as an extension user account. I would need a password. So here,、uh, change your password. All right. And、uh, just be careful. This password. Actually requires、uh, you know highly security, so which means you need to make a complex password. You cannot just set a password like this, all right? Because if you set a password like this, here you will get a notification. The password must be at least ten digits in length and、uh, include both upper and lower case letters and numbers. So in other words, it's it's supposed to be a complex password. All right, let's see. Yeah, you start one, two, three. Oh,、uh, next thing we got a user role here. So you probably get a question here: is what is the user role? Well, think about it. I was talking about the user password, which basically means this extension user can be able to access in our system with、uh, his extension number plus the user password. Well, the the question is: how about the user permission? I mean, if you can log into the system, what is your user permission? 
right? What sort of user information? What can you do with our system? You can only have some personal preference, uh, you know, configurations, or you can have something else. Can you change the extension settings? Can you set our zip trunk here? Well, how about the user permission? Well, this is about the user role. Give it a check here. By our system default setting, we have uh, several presets. Uh, we got administrator, supervisor, operator, uh, employee, human resource, accounting. So those presets basically means different user roles. Uh, different user roles have different user permissions. All right. So where exactly can we give it a check? I mean, more details about those user roles, uh, especially the user permissions. Well, you guys can see on my left hand, on the left side bar, this, this you know, side bar, we got a row here. So you can click on row there to check the user permissions for different user roles. Uh, I guess we can, let's just click on save first. All right, uh, oops. This email address is uh, associated with another extension, I guess. So forget about that. Try to save it first. All right, I'm gonna save it first and uh, then I will back to that extension again. So I will show you guys more details about the user role. Let's have a check. Talking about the user role, this is actually the user roles we have. Uh, all the presets we get on the system. So different presets has different, uh, I mean, different presets have different permissions, like I said. So you click on edit, you can give it a check here. The real name is the administrator currently and uh, outbound call permission. You can even set outbound call permission, uh, which I will talk about a little, a little bit later of the outbound route, okay. And uh, some other configurations like uh, you can see if, if I make a very particular extension user role as the administrator, it basically means all these configurations are going to be available. I mean, these operations are going to be available for you to, uh, you know, change your PBX, to set your PBX. For example, like uh, uh, extension, I just enable all extensions. So it basically means in the next time, if your user permission is the administrator, I mean, your user role is the administrator, when you log into the PBX with your particular user information, you can actually change the extensions directly. All right, so this is exactly the user permission. Now you guys can see, it's kind of like I just enable all of them. Uh, not all of them, but I guess 90% of our operations has been enabled for administrator. And let's see the difference. So if I select employee, all right, now you guys can see, uh, we only enable all extensions, all right, for reports and recordings. That's it. So if you're an employee, I guess you can just generate report there and uh, nothing else you can do with the system. Uh, this is exactly different uh, user permissions by different user roles, okay. And of course, you can make some customization. If you don't like this name, you can change this. If you want to have some other, you know, name, you can uh, rename it and uh, you can make your customization here for sure and you can even add a new user role all right like I want to create something new by myself I can just do it directly over here I don't want to use the preset then you can just skip the preset all right so this is about the user role and uh, let's get back to our extension so I guess previously we created an extension, which is uh, 1026. All right, this is the one I got it before. Now let's have a check. Other settings we have here is uh, extension information. Well, this is uh, pretty simple. This is just your extension number. This is your caller ID. If you create a new extension, uh, I guess you're gonna keep your extension number and caller ID the same thing. You don't wanna get confused. Now here's the registration name. Be careful. When you try to register your IP phone on your PBX uh, manually, let's see manually registration. Then you will need a registration name and registration password, right? So registration name is not extension number. It's something like this. And uh, here's the registration password. For better security, don't change the password. I guess you can click on this button to generate a random password. This is good for security. All right, and uh, next step, out, uh, outbound caller ID, which is your DOD number. Uh, well, about this part, I guess we're gonna talk about more details uh, in the next session, but just have a check here. So if you have a DOD number, 
I mean, you, you got uh, lots of zip chunks there or lots of ISDN channels there. Or anyway, you just want to set a specific DOD number uh, for this particular extension. Here's the place. So for extension 1026, I want to configure, I want to associate a very specific DOD number. And I can just put it over here. All right. Uh, and by the way, this DOD number, give it a check, more details. We got an emergency outbound caller ID. It basically means not just a DOD number. This, this actually basically means you're going to use this DOD number for emergency call. All right, so uh, it's optional. Uh, it's definitely optional. So sometimes if we make emergency call for the outbound, uh, I mean, for an outgoing call, uh, mostly we're going to just show the public security center with our chunk number, uh, you know, if you never set anything over here. So whichever extension make that specific call, the public security center will get this caller ID. It's just a number uh, of your chunk. But if you associate that specific number with this uh, extension, okay? So the public security center will figure this out. They will figure out your uh, DOD number, which is the outbound caller ID number and uh, they will also be able to figure out a very specific extension. Uh, this is not that popular. It depends. For example, like uh, some circ circumstances, like a hotel user, absolutely they will use this feature because they just need to tell uh, the public security center about a very particular room, a very particular extension. So they can use this. <coughs> <coughs> And uh, by the way, uh, outbound caller ID, so if you have some DOD numbers, uh, like I said, they're all going to be displayed over here. Okay, now let's keep going. Next step, we're going to have presence. The presence we have here is something about your Lancus presence, all right? So, uh, you know, we have Lancus solutions right now, right? We have Lancus application on your mobile, Lancus application on your computer. And also we have link as web client. All right, so three different options are available for you. And if you change the presence over here, that presence will be synchronized on all of your linkes. So next time when you use your Yaystar linkes, a mobile client, web client, or even the PC client, uh, when you access the system, uh, you will have the presence. And of course you can drop something for your presence information. Like uh, if I'm available, I can drop something like, hey, what's up? Or if I'm a good business trip, I can probably drop something like, uh, I'm on a business trip, call me later, or leave a message for me, something like that. Then here we got a call for wording. Uh, well, this is something very basic, but quite interesting is we got internal costs and external costs. So you can set different destinations for both of your internal costs and external costs separately, I mean. So many options for your, you know, customization you can set it as an email uh, i'm sorry voicemail or ring group or queue or a mobile number external number whatever you prefer okay or maybe you don't want to use the call for wording so you can simply just hand up all right i'm not going to use call for wording i'll just hand it up all right then we have a ring strategy. I mean, think about it. Now you have your endpoint, which is going to be your IP phone or something, you know, something else. And you're going to have your Lancus, uh, the Lancus mobile client, uh, PC client, and even web client. Anyway, so uh, the ring strategy we have here is just, you know, set a ring strategy. Which one would you like to run it first? All right. Uh, currently, we got, a, uh, you know, by default setting, we just select them all. So we have extension, endpoint, Lancus mobile client, and Lancus desktop client. All right. And here you guys can see we just mark it soft phone only because Lancus desktop client get another option, uh, which is the CTI mode. So if you make your Lancus desktop client work as the CTI mode, work under the CTI mode, uh, it doesn't work. All right. This feature doesn't work because you're not going to use your Lancus desktop client to handle the incoming call directly. I mean, you already turn it to CTI mode. So you're going to use your desktop client to manage, I mean, to, to control your IP phone uh, directly. So it works like a control panel only. All right, just be careful with that. All right, then ring timeout. So for this particular user, we got a 30 seconds ring timeout by default setting, of course. 
All right, some other options like uh, ring the mobile number simultaneously. Well, this is actually your uh, mobility extension feature. So sometimes you're out of the office and uh, you don't want to miss a call and maybe currently you don't have Linkus available. So you can probably use the mobility extension feature as well. All right. And uh, here we got to accept the push notifications. So for sure, your mobile will get a push notification for you just to notify you. And the uh, next one, agent status auto switch. All right, so we can select do nothing or we can select lock in. All right, so this is just uh, some options for you. <clears throat> okay, so this is about the presence. And the next part, voicemail. Uh, voicemail settings, first thing, it has been enabled automatically, of course. And this is going to be your voicemail access pen. You can change it. Uh, and next thing we got here is new voicemail notification. You can set do not send uh, email notifications or <clears throat> you can select send email notifications with attachment uh, or without attachment. So some options are available for you to make this kind of configuration, uh, you know, customization. And we can even play date and time, play caller ID, and play message duration. Uh, so if you can just enable them, uh, those items will be played specifically. Okay, then next part, voicemail greeting. This is quite interesting. Voicemail greeting is like uh, you will have some personalization here. We can use the default greeting, so we just follow the system. The system will just play the default voicemail. I guess maybe something like, uh, please leave your message followed by a pound key. Uh, you know, something like that. But this is customizable. If you want to uh, record something new, you can click on record new. Uh, just select your extension, all right? So like I'm going to use this extension. I'm going to give it the name of this audio file. Then I can click on save. So I will get a, a phone ring. Then I just grab the phone, record this new prompt. So just like I said, it's not a big deal, but you will have more personalization for different status, different presence. Like if I'm available, I can play a prompt. If I'm uh, you know out of the office, I get a business trip or something, I can record another prompt. So... Uh, this is just exactly like I said. We're going to have more personalization for, you know, for callers. All right, let's keep going. Then we have some features. Uh, first one is notifications. So you, you guys can see we have uh, enabled send email notification when user password is changed just for security. And the uh, next one is send email notifications on missed calls. If you have a missed call you want to get notified, click on that. All right, and a uh, call recording. This is another special feature, guys. If you enable this one, you will have this very special function. All right, allow the extension to stop or restart call recording during the call by pressing the recording button or dialing the feature code as risk one in the Linkus clients or IP file. Uh, this is a really advanced feature. You know, if mostly if we enable call recording feature, I mean the auto recording feature for our system, no one can stop it. That's auto recording mostly. But if you enable this feature, it basically means auto recording feature works well, it works fine. And if this very particular extension got a call currently, and uh, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want this call be recorded, you can actually stop it. All right. So it's optional for you. Okay. And then we got a call handling based on caller ID. So some specific caller ID, you will like to handle handle that call specifically. Like I just want to hand it up. Or I want to drop it to another destination. I can make a selection here. Uh, for example, like some prank calls, I want to hand it up directly. Then you can just select hand up. Put that specific caller ID over here. Okay. Uh, so this is about features and advanced settings. It's just something for your DTMF mode. Uh, you know, something for your transport. I guess we can keep the default setting for sure. And uh, for security, if you don't have a remote extension, well, I don't have. I, I don't think you you will need to make some modifications here. If all of your extensions are deployed in the local area network, this part will be fine. You're protected by the firewall on your router, on your PBX, anyway. Okay, now next part, Linkus clients. 
So Linkus client, as you guys can see, has been enabled automatically. I mean, your Linkus mobile client, desktop client, and even the web client. They're all going to be, uh, you know, enabled automatically, so you can just use them directly. And for Linkus clients, I guess this is not a big deal. You can just use it directly. Like I said, uh, simply get the application on your mobile or your computer, or you can use the web client to access the system directly. And uh, for mobile client, for PC client, here's the login QR code, and here's the login link. All right, so you can just use the login link and login QR code to access the system directly. All right. And uh, another thing a little bit special here is the operator panel. So what is the operator panel? Well, operator panel is a very functional feature uh, on our PC service this time, all right? So it basically means every single user will be able to have the operator panel feature for sure. And uh, we have a default operator panel configuration here. I mean, a default set for every single extension, which is uh, extension group for all extensions. So it basically means every single extension user, if you go access the web client, all right, be careful, operator panel is, is based on your web client, all right. So every single extension user, they access in their web client, they will be able to have the operator panel of all extensions. All right, this is the default setting. So you will be able to see all of your extensions displayed in the operator panel. And as for operations, let's give it a check. Here we can make some changes. The user type, it basically means uh, what can you do with this, this extension group, this default ex extension group, uh, which, which is all extension, this group, all right? So by default setting, it's user. And uh, you guys can see nothing I can do here. And all these items are activated for you. All these operations are available for you, like a switch group member's presence, call distribution management, anyway. But you can make changes. You can select manager. You can select user. Uh, these two are default settings. You can do nothing there. You can just make your selection only. Well, the difference between them is if you select manager, you will have more operations. And if you select user, you will have less operations. That's it. And uh, if you want to make customization, you can select custom. Well, this is the way how you're going to handle the operations. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the management of this particular user group, extension group, I'm sorry. So it basically means this extension user, 1026, when you log into your web client, when you check on the operative panel, and uh, can you do something there? It depends on us. If I enable switch group members presence, then you can use your operative panel to switch group members presence. Well, if I disable it, if I select nothing here, oh, well, it basically means nothing you can do here. You can only check the extensions. Uh, they will just be displayed on the operator panel, but there is nothing you can do. None of these operations are going to be available for you. All right, so this is about the extension uh, user with this particular operator panel. And uh, you can also click on Add, Add something new. So here you can select different extension groups, all right? But different extension groups actually means you're going to create them by yourself. So you guys can see I got a, I got this drop down list because I create a bunch of extension groups before so I will have those options. All right. Uh, but anyway, I will talk about more details of this extension group a little bit later. All right. Just hold on a sec. Okay. So this is about the operative panel and uh, let's keep going. Next thing we have here is phone and function keys. Well, this is quite interesting. If you click on phone, you, you can see currently I got nothing here because we got this notification associated a phone with this extension because you never register a phone on this extension. But if you register a phone on this extension successfully, all of your phone configurations will be displayed over here, which basically means some configuration you want to have on your IP phone. Traditionally, as you're going to go access your IP phone's interface, but now I guess you don't even need to access your IP phone. Leave your IP phone there, and if you want to change something for your IP phone, you can go access here. I will show you guys another example. All right, so just uh, wait a sec. Okay, uh, once you finish your configuration, don't forget to click on Save uh, and uh, this Apply button. Uh, by the way, very important. Okay, so this is the way how we create an extension. Now let's keep going. 
Now, once we figure out our extensions, uh, for example, you create a bunch of extensions over here, the next step is you can actually use our auto provisioning for your phone registration. I mean, of course, you can go access your IP fans interface for phone registration uh, manually, but we got auto provisioning, so let's give it a check. So the auto provisioning is quite simple. If you want to use the auto provisioning feature, all right, uh, just remember that. Step one, you're going to make sure your PBX is well configured. And step two, make sure your IP phone, it's a brand new IP phone, all right? If, it's, if this is something already configured, uh, you just reboot that phone, all right? Reset it, all right? Make sure this is a brand new system. And then you connect your IP phone in your local area network, okay? And I guess mostly our IP phones are work as DHCP mode. So you don't have to worry about the IP address. I guess your router will give will distribute a very specific IP address automatically. But if you don't, uh, I guess you can change the IP address manually by yourself. Anyway, whatever you prefer, uh, just put the IP phone in your local area network, connect it in this local area network, and then you will have your IP phone displayed on this panel, like what I have right now. You guys can see I get a bunch of IP phones displayed uh, in this panel. So I can just make a selection. Like I will select this specific IP phone, which is uh, unassigned. All right, so it's available for me. And then I will just click on edit. So you guys can see IP phone information. Uh, this particular phone's information will be displayed automatically. And uh, even the template. All right, so I guess we can just keep it, keep it over here then select your extension. Which extension exactly are you going to assign it for this particular phone? Let's see Tina. So I will just select Tina. Then I click on save. Uh, this phone will get a, you know, a automatic rebooting. That's it. And you just wait a sec. Your IP phone will take rebooting automatically. And uh, if the rebooting finished, all right, so of course the status will show you it's registered. Uh, apparently, it's on register right now because I'm not so sure this IP phone is working normally or not. This is not my IP phone. This is someone else's IP phone. I don't even know whose IP phone is here. But anyway, this is just a way how we use the auto provisioning uh, for that phone registration. Okay. And for sure, uh, if you want to have something else, you can also give it a check here. Uh, we can also click on the settings. Uh, if you click on settings, you just jump back to the extension, which is the very particular extension, 2000 interface, configuration interface, all right? And uh, we're going to show you the phone configuration. All right, so this is the thing which I mentioned before. Once you associate that phone with this particular extension directly, then if you want to change something like a phone settings, phone web language, phone language, uh, signal tones, anyway, whatever, all these phone configurations, you don't need to access your phone anymore, guys. You don't need to access the interface, the web GUI of your phone, or you even use the Dell pad for this configuration. You can finish all this customization, the hardware IP phone configuration, on your PBX interface directly. A much easier for you to do. And even the function keys. Like if you want to define something for your BLF or something, a speed dial, anyway, you can configure it here directly. Like I said, you don't need to go access the web interface, the web GUI of your IP phone anymore. Forget about that. That's a little bit tricky for me because I will need to check the IP phone's IP address. I don't need to do that. I can just do it through my PBX directly because currently I'm just working on the PBX. So I would prefer to finish everything through this same platform directly. That's much easier for me. All right, so this is about the auto provisioning. All right, and uh, by the way, here we also have resource uh, repository. Let's give it a check. Repository is just a place where, you know, keep our templates. So you guys will see default templates will be displayed over here. And uh, if you want to customize them, you can also click on custom template. <coughs> so here you can uh, make some, you know, selection. Uh, then just change the default template. So if you want to customize some specific template, you can do it by yourself here. Okay. And here we also have device firmware. This is for your IP phone's firmware. So if you have some IP phone firmware, uh, you can actually upload them over here. You can store the firmware for that specific phone over here. And next time, if you want to upgrade that specific IP phone, 
uh, you can just go access the phones over here. And uh, let's say I'm going to select extension here. We got a firmware upgrade. So you can just upgrade this phone's firmware uh, directly through your PBX. Again, like I said. All right, guys. I don't even know whose IP phone is that one, but I just uh, associated with 1000 Tina successfully. Okay, so it works. It's pretty simple, like I said. You know, just simply click on it, restart your phone, reboot it, and uh, here we go. Okay. All right, so this is about the auto provisioning. And then now let's talk about the extension group. I guess this is going to be the last one I will talk about in today's session, in this session. So have a check. The extension group, uh, honestly, if you got a brand new system, you don't have this. I mean, these groups, you don't have them. These are all created by myself, all right? You will only have the default of extensions. So the extension group is very interesting. It's very functional, all right? Give it a check here. You can add a new extension group here, uh, whatever you want here, service center, configuration team, uh, tech support, maintenance, let's see, tech 101, anyway. And then you can select your members. You can select all of your members or you can select specific extensions. All right, so some specific guys like Ramon, Tillian, Jesse, uh, you know, they're going to work in this tech support 101. All right, so this is going to be the group. And the group permission, let's have a check. Group permissions we got here is, first of all, group information visibility. Uh, if I never change it, it's visible to all extensions. So it basically means every single extension when you log into your web client and if I assign this specific extension group for you, uh, you know, it's visible for you, all of you guys. The presence, uh, especially these three guys' presence information will be displayed on your web client. But I can select the visible to extensions in this group only. So the people who's not in this group, I'm sorry, there's nothing going to display on your web client to show you anything about this extension group. And I can also select visible to specific extensions. So make a selection. All right. So this is about the visibility of this extension group. And also we have permission configuration. Now, for example, you guys can see for this particular group, we got a manager and user. That's the default setting, right? And uh, by default setting, we got manager. Uh, these operations are going to be available. So if I set a particular extension's permission to manage this extension group as the manager, well, you will be able to use these operations on your web client. All right. And if I set your identity as the user, I'm sorry, you can only check the vis I mean, you will only have the visibility of this extension group, but there's nothing you can do. None of these operations are going to be available for you to handle any cost uh, with this extension group. I mean, when you try to use the operator panel. All right, so this is about the extension group. Quite interesting and uh, quite functional, especially when we log into our system with a very particular user extension, uh, I mean, extension user information. It works pretty good. But anyway, I will talk about more details about the web client and uh, also something like operator panel, uh, something like the web client, the details uh, in our uh, session four. So today, session one. So in session four, we're going to talk about more details there. Okay. All right, guys. So I guess that was all we have for the session one. Uh, hopefully, everything's informative and clear for you guys. And uh, if you guys have any questions or you want to know more details about our Yay Star P series, system, uh, please visit our website, www.yaystore.com, or you guys can, you know, subscribe our YouTube channel. We get lots of video updates on our channel as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one.